Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, welcome to another episode of uh, Cafe Talk, and today we have a very special guest. It's uh, because we have a very special episode. Uh, today's our actually what our tenth episode. So yep, it is. Uh, you know, I'm here with usual Jolin and me. You know, you guys know us, but our special guest is our friend Edward. Say hi, Edward. What's up, everybody? Yeah, Edward. Edward here is uh, it's our longtime friend. You know, almost uh, we've known him just as long as uh, Jolin and I have been friends, and we brought him along so we could talk about music. The music, music you say? Yeah, mu- yeah music. Yeah, today's topic is music. The oh, right. of music. Yeah. So, ooh, what about music? Uh, what are but we first, bring up, well, Jolene? first of all, Edward, why don't you tell our audience a little bit, a little bit about yourself? All nah, right, nobody uh, wants to hear that. My name is Edward Arturo <laughs> León. I'm 22. Uh, representing Huntington Park, California. Hey, that's what's up. You know, what's up? Uh, I don't know. I'm uh, Mexican American. Parents are from uh, Mexico. I was born here. Uh, a lot of people say I look Indian. I don't know why, but you know, I'm <laughs> white, green eyes. Uh, oh, okay. That's I like not. Nightmare Before Christmas. <laughs> I lie to people now. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. come on, bro. You, you have a nice um, beard right there going on. You know, it's great. It's a little red. Yeah, my hair is a little black, so I don't I don't know where they get. How does that work, man? <laughs> I don't know, bro. But uh, anyways, we chose Edward to be our guest because uh, out of, in our group of friends, Edward is the most music savvy. I uh, like, in my opinion, you, right. you have a pretty good music do, selection. Do you want to define savvy for the listeners that don't know what that is? But you got to put me on the spot like it's that. Like, huh? It's like it's like it's like it's like tech savvy, but about music. It's basically <laughs> you just, you're a it's basically someone who's like knowledgeable and also uh, takes takes pride in their knowledge of the topic. So if someone's yeah. music savvy, That's they're great. very knowledgeable about different genres, different uh, time periods of music. If someone's tech savvy, they you're, love you're very technology. vocabulary savvy, Joel. Thank you. <laughs> that, <laughs> let's move on. Right. So um, this hour, I guess, however long we record, we're going to talk about music, all kinds of music, everything music. Um, so yeah, let's let's start with Victor. The stabbing. Wait, what? Why me? I don't know. Just, <laughs> just uh, name. So what's uh? Just name a couple of artists that you know you listen to, and they brighten up your day. So um, on a daily basis, it doesn't have to be daily. Or just over. so I'm, a, I'm a, actually my genre is very different from you guys's. Like that's that's you know what I mean that's, I guess that's what we're here for. Uh, my genre has always been more of the romantic type genre, you know, like uh, make you feel good day that type of stuff, uh, which is weird. I mean, I'll I'll, I'll explain that some other day. But uh, yeah, mainly I just listen to romantic music. Uh, uh, what is it like? Uh, I forgot his name. The the one Jason Mraz. Jason like, Mraz. Yeah, like Bruno him. Mars. Bruno Mars. Yeah. Um, but the the few the little hip hop I do listen to, it's like my favorite number one Eminem. Oh. Uh, I've listened to Eminem for like the longest, and I really got into him deeper than any other artist I've gotten into. Like, I went back to his like original stuff from like. You know, Slim Shady LP, uh, to be like uh, from then on onwards and stuff. Uh, I even listened to him when he was in D12, but yeah. What a, that's like that's like around my genre of music. What, what about you guys? Yeah, Edward, you're a guest. You can go next. All right. Uh, well, I have a broad music genre, but uh, if you were to ask me what's my favorite, I go with '90s hip hop, today's hip hop. Whoever's listening, not to be offended, but uh, it's kind of whack. <laughs> there's like no, you know, there's no dissing to other rappers. There's no stories being told. Isn't it mostly just like, it's, uh, what's it's about me? It's the beats that yeah, you right? don't get some. Um, I get you. It's uh, the beats and diss tracks. Yeah, it's the, the yeah. beats. The YouTube, you know, it's the diss tracks, which aren't even diss tracks, to be honest. But, uh, you know, everybody does their thing. Yeah. I prefer 90s because I could actually relate to them a lot more. I don't relate to owning a Lamborghini. I don't really. A Rolex? What is that? <laughs> All right. True. All right. Fair enough. No, my bad. It- Daily basis, I would listen to uh, some Tupac and then some Michael Jackson. You know, Man in the Mirror has always got my heart on that one. And then, I'm not big on romantic, but if I was to choose a genre for that, it'd probably be bachata because it go it dwells straight into it. Um, nice. I, bachata's always been more of a dance for me. Yeah, it's, same. yeah, it's, it's, it's the beats great. It's a dance, yeah. but it's usually like a love story that's being told. It's yeah, a family, definitely, if you will. Um, 
I'm not super big on classical music. It's it's obviously classical for a reason. You know, it's great uh, symphonies. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. What about you, Jones? Yeah. What about you, Jones? Uh, well, just to just to quicken it up a little bit, like my music history started with, um, I guess now you consider a classic rock, or just like, okay. like no, no, like oldies rock, classic yeah. rock. Um, freaking Aerosmith, Guns N' Roses, Scorpions, yeah. Eagles, those kind of bands because um, my dad was a rocker back in the day, so he his music trickled down to me, and then I went from rap, I went from rock to rap, and then from rap to reggae, and then back to like R and B, soul, and then now it's just everywhere because like I appreciate um, all these little little uh, trinkets from different music genres, mm -hmm. um, but like top. Top bands, top artists. At the moment, it's it's Logic. I like once them. once I found out about him, like I was just obsessed with him. He's an amazing artist. Um, Rise Against always has a special place in my heart because they were the first rock band I ever really got into. Rage Against the Machines, like you could just listen to them whenever, and it'll always put you in a good mood, or it'll put you in like a fuck yeah mood, because <laughs> that's what they do. That's that's what they're for. Um, and yeah, America, fuck yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, we have we have some questions that we've written down, um, but uh, oh, well, since Jolin already said how his started, I'm gonna go with mine. My music started with my mom and my older brother. You know, I'm a Latino, so every Sunday my mom would, you know wake the whole house up like at six seven in the morning with music cleaning the but house my mama wasn't the regular mama you know she used to go from tupac to los tigres ah, los tigres 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 yeah. tigres del norte yeah, you got it. and then going to michael jackson and then going to madonna so hey. yeah she she she's all over the place my older brother's the one that didn't was like heavy on the maiden hip hop, but that's probably because you know he was gangs and shit. But yeah, that's how my music started. That's very that's very weird. Um, I mean maybe that's why it leads to me being a romantic too, because my my startup was actually very different. Mine mine was more of a my mom and my sister. My dad was always working because uh, she had, he had to work like two jobs. So and then even then my dad was more of like the strict Mexican uh, song listener. You know, puras bachatas, rancheras. Uh, oh, I see. Uh, the, the the Mexican songs that like always curse in Spanish. But yet, like my we couldn't listen to those because my mom hated that. Uh, so I would always listen to my mom. Well, my mom would listen, and my sister would listen. And my mom was all the classic romanticas like Selena and and you know, uh, robaste mi amor por dos dos dineros dos monedas <laughs> or something like that. You know. Um, and my sister was more of like the hood rat, you know, at the time. Like, you know, right now it's like, what is it? What's it called? The uh, uh, trap music? Trap music, yeah. But back then it was like hood rats. Uh, so that's what she would listen to. It would be like, uh, you know, fucking Baby Bash and those guys, you know, the Usher. And, and back then when it was just like about love and, and I'll treat you right. And then, and then it would go into like hardcore sex, that type of stuff for some reason. But that's why I guess I'm, I just got stuck to the romantic genre, which is always like okay. going into that brings back good memories of that time. Fair enough. Yeah. I mean, that just that just like reminded me because um, like the earliest I can remember uh, listening to music and kind of appreciating it to an extent was because like back in elementary school and like even kindergarten, mm -hmm. my parents had this cassette that my grandpa gave them and it was filled with like 70s and 80s like love songs like there was. There was like Air Supply, Stevie Wonder, uh, freaking Earth, Wind and Fire, nice. like all of them. And I would wake up to these songs and like, I remember liking it at first. And then once you wake up to uh, like Stevie Wonder's What a Beautiful, What a Wonderful World, like 84 <laughs> times, you just get tired of it. And you're like, I maybe it's not what? so wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's, uh, that's funny that you mentioned that. Yeah. Also. I mean, they do say your parents are your first teachers, so, you know. Yeah. We learn from their mistakes or their whatever they have. All right, Edward, so a quick question that I wanted to ask you. Um, is there an album that you feel like people of similar background to you should listen to as inspiration or just to, to like, help them through the hard times? 
Or it doesn't even have to be an album. It could be a song. All right, all right. Uh, or maybe maybe you want to say it's the album because of a specific song. You yeah. Know? Like, even if the rest of the songs don't really matter. Right, for sure, for sure. Anybody who hasn't heard of Immortal Technique, I strongly recommend you listen to him. Yeah. He's super underrated. Uh, you know, he's old school, but he's an he's MC. underground, too. He's an actual MC, and in case nobody knows what that is, that's a master of ceremonies. Um, you know, these guys earn the MC. You don't just, you know, put your MC before your name. You, you, didn't just, you don't just go out and buy a, buy a MacBook Pro mm-hmm. and pretend you're <laughs> nah, you, 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 you can't do that. Um, but, uh, yeah. I mean, so, that's, what, that's what we did. Mm-hmm. I went out and bought a MacBook and a microphone, and now we're a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're not MCs, yeah, though. Not, yeah. MC we're not. Jumbo we're not. Yeah, we could we're not, be. We could be. Um, not throwing down them saucy rats. No, a different type know. of MC. The DJ is not, not the, the MC. It's never the. DJ I know. I know. Right? But a different type. We could like open up an actual ceremony, like the Oscars or Grammy. That's still an MC. Oh yeah. man. That's a different from hip hop MC. Regardless, it still defines an MC. Continue. I guess. Continue. But uh, yeah, I go with the Immortal Technique, uh, preferably. Uh, I think his best one is Revolutionary Volume Two. Mm-hmm. Um. And the reason I'm saying to listen to this guy is because he's grimy. He'll get in your face, but he talks about real stuff that used to happen in the 90s, 2000s. You know, they're still going on right now. It's very political, but it deals with, like, Latin America. It deals with a lot of issues that, you know, a lot of people don't know unless they go to college or unless, you know, they search it up. But, yeah, definitely Mortal Technique with the Revolutionary Volume 2. Definitely. Yeah. I agree. That shit is pretty good. It's a good yeah. selection. The thing is, like, you mentioned that he's grimy and he's up in your face. I feel like that that kind of hinders him. Like, don't get me wrong. That's how he defined himself. That's his whole, like, music personification. But I feel like that aspect of him is what turns him off to a lot of, a lot of potential people. listeners. I-, I feel you. But the thing is that his audience is in the weak-hearted, but it's the strong-hearted. It's the ones that... You gotta you remember know, that you have to stay strong when you're fighting yeah, for something. exactly. He's yeah. the, he's targeting the people that will rise up in arms against, you know, the oppressors. He's not exactly. targeting the people that will be like, oh yeah, we'll pay this amount for the net neutrality. Like, mm-hmm. nah, he's fucking... He's, he's, talking to the people that signed the little you know waivers or whatever to stop net neutrality that they know that they have the rights yeah. to it and that they want to fight for it the ones that uh, aren't afraid to like you know blast the music when everyone else is telling them to quiet down so yeah like say. i'm pretty sure most people have heard or if anything the one song we've heard of him from him is dance with the devil oh yeah and obviously that's that's pretty you know it's pretty dark yeah that's a really dark but song. if you the thing is, his songs are very uh, storytelling. You need to know your metaphors, your similes. You need to understand that he's not just saying things like in a... Not demonic, but like in a twisted fashion for no reason. Like, he's saying it. There's purpose behind it. Yeah. Word. yeah so, but, but I feel what you mean. I, I do get it. Especially with today's kids, you know, they're all about getting lit, getting happy, you know good music if you will but pretty much like numbing yourself yeah but life. it's like come on man like th- this guy's trying to tell you what's going on in the it, world it, it is i understand what john's saying like it, yeah, it would I be feel. hard to like uh listen to him because he does throw the truth in your face like in every almost every song hmm. and then on top of that he has to act in a way where he's like i don't care if you got if you come after me like i'm telling the truth how it is you know so it's like my right to do that um, so if you do want to listen to him, you got to be prepared for, like, yeah, cursing, yeah. swearing, because he has to be the type of guy that, like, like, doesn't give a fuck. Like, if anything, I'd say listen to Eminem first, because he has more of that, like, childish cursing thing, where it's yeah. a little bit more, yeah, like, definitely. that, and then jump into this guy. Where he's more like, I'm crazy because I want to be crazy, yeah. not because I'm, because I have to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. but, yeah, that, that, that's the album I'd say. Alright, uh, we're going to take a quick break. Alright, cool. Um, so yeah, don't go anywhere. Be right back. Anyways, all right, we're back. <laughs> um, we just had some stuff to deal with. We we left off as uh, Edward's favorite uh, rapper or, or no, no, album, no, a song album, or album. Song. That, yeah. yeah. So what's you yours, would, Jordan? What's your um, what, what would you recommend for the people out there yeah. listening to us? I mean, if you haven't if you haven't heard it already, um, was it 
J. Cole's uh, 2014. Oh, Forest, Forest Hills Drive? Yeah, Forest Hills Drive. Forest Hills Drive. As a... That's, that's one actually of, what, what probably was one of my options, too. Yeah, I was for that's, that. like, one of my favorite albums for multiple reasons. Like, one, uh, J. Cole is just an amazing composer. His lyrics, uh, in my in my opinion, they're, they're great. There's certain aspects where, like, you can tell that he's, like, a legit... Like, he's legit gone through the struggle. And then um, growing up in, like, uh, South L.A., given, like, I, I'm better off than other people, and I don't take that for granted... But there are cases where, like, you know, we do struggle for money. We do struggle to pay our rent. Mm-hmm. And then even, like, I'm uh, just because I don't I don't fit in in the, in the neighborhood that I'm from. Like, I'm scared to walk down the street sometimes because I feel like people think I have more than I actually do when they want to take advantage of that. Yeah. Um, but a lot of his, a lot of J. Cole's, uh, like, the message that I got from his album was that you have these these obstacles and this like down this down um this just like down state of mind in your life but that shouldn't stop you from doing what you want like i think it's um what was it it's not january 28th or Which uh or tale of two what cities does it talk about? uh it's when he's when he like talks about his uh, talks about his homie how oh, his homie looked uh, up to him uh, oh wait out of lessons Where you... there you go I'm um, sorry to barge in, but my favorite part of that one was the the one where he says, um, "How you looking up to me when yeah, I look that, up to you?" Yeah, that's what I was. That's what I was gonna you say. Know, you're about to get a degree when I've got two choices. Either either, either, either graduate too late or it's... sell a number two. <laughs> yeah. Or what? A hundred bucks or two a week. A hundred bucks a week. Yeah, that that yeah. hits hard. I, I feel you do. Yeah. All right. So there's a lot of like just the way that he says things and the message that he gives to his listeners. I feel. Everyone should listen to his song at least once, and it'll show that, like, your life may suck, but it can't get better. You just gotta not give up. You gotta yeah. keep going for it. And just, like, how his album is formed, it, it like, puts him at the bottom in the beginning. And then at the end, at the end of his album, he, like, it basically maps out his rise to fame and how mm-hmm. he doesn't abuse his own wealth and fame. True. Like, it's just, it's just mapped out like that amazingly. Mm-hmm. And at the end, I like how he thanks everybody. Like, exactly. Literally, his yeah. last song is nothing but thanking people. Yeah, it's, uh, I was like, that's really cool. I like that. It's the credits. Yeah. All right, Senior Victor. Victor. What about you? I've been thinking a lot about this. It doesn't um, have to be an album. It could just be a song. It doesn't have to be rap. No, I know, I know, but I I really well, like I said, you know, Eminem's always been one that I listen to pretty much more albums than anybody else, you know. So I would highly recommend. Uh, the Marshall Mathers LP two, because there's there's two of them already. Um, yeah. I'll go for the second one, not because it's great, not because it's amazing, not because it's like something that will change your life. It's something that like, if you want to get into rap, that's a good place for me, like in my opinion, to start. It's not it's not something like you know two two to the left, two to the right. You know, it's somewhere in the middle. It's like uh, Eminem's trying to go back to his roots at that point because he already tried to make uh, other albums where he like wasn't performing at his peak you know like um the songs weren't really selling the albums were really selling as good as the other ones before that and i just think lp2 was one of those albums that it it came out and people gave it a chance and they listened to like the songs that were in there uh rap god was one of the songs that were really popular just because he was super fast in that song for it was popular for like a good while um but i think the album itself is just a good like homage to how he started out um he went back to like you know how hip-hop should be back like especially with the song berserk um it it went back to like the old school hip-hop for a bit uh and i think you know he i I just think it's a great album like i really like it It just to just to start out like it's nothing incredibly amazing like yeah like you guys but i just think it's a you know if anybody out there wants to get into eminem anybody out there wants to get into hip-hop it's just a good place to like start out and then you could branch out from there and be like okay you know i i got that it's you know rhyming i got that it's like sending a message in each song or just enjoying yourself and then from then on you could go to wherever you want whether it'll be political messages or life messages or just like to the new hip-hop where it's just like money and bitches and drinks and alcohol and drugs and shit like that you know you could take it from there 
fair enough. Still on the topic of like Eminem. Yeah. Um, when this podcast comes out, it would have been like two weeks that Eminem's new album Revivalist oh, yeah. dropped. Yeah. Um, I always forget that like Eminem does have a he does have a background in politics in his songs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like um, because his new album, more or less of like. More or less of like half of the half of the songs on the album deals with some form of politics, whether it's like you shouldn't accept the status quo, um, you should like fight for the rights that you want, and all these other things. And then you, like I was taken aback because they're similar to songs like Mosh in America, mm-hmm. uh, from what was it Encore or Curtain Call? I don't yeah, remember. Yeah, no, I think it's Encore. Yeah, um, but Eminem. I feel like he's a pretty good place for a lot of people to start because he, as as weird as it sounds, there's like three varieties. There's like Marshall Mathers, there's mm-hmm. like uh, Slim Shady, and there's like Eminem. Eminem so. Um, so you can get the variety that rap has to offer in like one person. True. That's true, yeah. I agree with that. Yeah, the Marshall Mathers is always that, that really sad, uh, like close to realistic uh, rapper Eminem. You know, like he talks about like life, the sadness that that it brings to it. Uh, Eminem, he's more like uh, the 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 rhymes, the the message, the the delivering uh, aspect of the song. And then Slim Shady is just the crazy, like I don't give a fuck, fuck you, fuck me, fuck the world. Uh, so you know, you could get a taste of bit. That's what I'm saying. You get a taste of like everything you want, and then you can go branch out into that direction, like trying to research what yeah, what good. rap has to deliver. That was a good answer, Victor. Thank you. Really good. Appreciate it. Real good. Thank you. Real good. I appreciate you. Better. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't. I mean. Um. I so, I have I have a question for you guys. Uh, wh- what songs or what albums do you remember that that you would say defined a generation? Like, like what, what artists or what songs do you remember that that, that was a turning point and you're like, oh, okay, this, that's when this whole, like, 10 years is going to be about. You get, you get what I mean? Like, for me, kind of like, my example would be Britney Spears. That oh. defined a generation. You get me? Like, like there was girls, there was guys, there was everybody was going crazy over Britney. And, and that's, that's for me, what, that's what I mean by Britney Spears. I get you. Like, See, like, I wasn't alive during that generation or that time when the song uh-huh. came out. But... To me, songs that define a generation are those that are just like timeless. Like you can listen to anytime. any any time, any year, and they're like you feel the same sense as somebody who uh, to hearing it, like, the right song there. for the first time, like yeah. in the seventies, probably listened to. And for me, that song is like uh, was it "Staying Alive" by the Bee Gees? Oh yeah, no, I, I get you. Yeah, yeah, I feel like that Definitely. song alone defined like the seventies mm-hmm. or seventies, right? Is it the seventies? That's like disco era. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Hold on, let me fact. Let me fact check this. I'll put it up on the screen. Staying alive, staying alive. Where are you? Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh. Well, you can tell by the way I walk. Ha, 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 ha. That's exactly the one. Right there. I see many word by word. I just don't um, want to get copyright, <laughs> so I just have to like cut it out right there. Like, oh, yeah, 1977. 1977. There we go. But yeah, I feel like that song um, is like the perfect definition for the 70s. Yeah. Okay, uh, okay, I, I get that. That's a good response. I don't know, that's a tough one, actually. Yeah, yeah very tough. Because, um, I mean, it's it has multiple answers. Like, yeah. there, there, honestly, there's no wrong answers. That's why it's your own opinion of, yeah, like, what do you the think thing it is, would. Every year there's a song or an artist that, you know, everybody listens to. Mm-hmm. Was it last year or two years ago? Everybody was listening to Panda by Designer. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Song. Uh, right now, Drake. It's funny a- that you mentioned that because, like, um, I don't know who came first, if it was Designer or Future, but those two are like the tight ends of what makes rap music today. The, like, the, the whole, like, rap? trap, yeah. uh, kind of like how, how music is going. Like, they, them alone, like, brought rise of, like, Post Malone and, like, little. Lil Uzi and all these other well, I don't people. think Post Malone is a trap but but like feel, similar to their beats yeah I feel I feel what you mean but you know I don't know they, they just changed it uh, you know 
they changed the West Coast. Right now, Drake is like the number one person to listen to. But I feel like didn't Kanye think he was gonna. Didn't Kanye think he was gonna be the number one person like overall? Yeah, ever? yeah, yeah. yeah. Kanye, that's that's how Kanye is. Um, <laughs> but I think NWA. I am not a gay fish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yesterday, last night, I was watching a Family Guy episode. They were making fun of Kanye in the best way possible. On Family Guy. On Family Guy, mm-hmm. they put there were there were candy canes with Kanye glasses, and they were each talking like Kanye would talk as they were what? filling up the stockings. Yeah, like. I forgot what they were talking because it was all just like political Kanye stuff. Uh, but he was talking about me of himself and like me, me, me. And then he was talking about um, like political stuff about like how the world is gonna change and how how, how music is gonna change. And then the last Kanye King, that's the only one I remember. He talks about like Kanye is the greatest. Kanye is the best. Gotta go something with his Kanye vest. <laughs> and I was just like. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking family guy, That's man. Funny. They got him spot on. But I'm sorry, Edward. I'm sorry, That's Edward. Yeah. I mean, I already gave my response. Yeah. Yeah, the NWA. Yeah, NWA. Yeah, that's true. That's a good one. Yeah. I like that yeah. one. Yeah. That makes sense. You're welcome. I mean, there was a whole the, that their most famous song, you know, "Fuck the Police." You know, that's that's what everybody knows. Everybody uses. It makes sense. Yeah, that's what I'm giving them. That's my two cents in this opinion. Fair enough. Yeah, I don't like to a lesser extent. I feel like someone who brought a lot of light into into the mind of their generation was probably like Kurt Cobain and Nirvana. With because the, the beginning of grunge. Yeah, with the beginning mm. of grunge, because like grunge itself um, is supposed to be like this deeper uh, kind of like hard rock that not a lot of people like it, it's supposed to be kind of disturbing to the ear but in, in a sense like beautiful as well because you look at songs that nirvana did like heart shaped box and it's like the topic that they talk about is very disturbing um but it shows light into into like different uh different ways of thinking uh same thing with like Polly, like the whole song of like the whole song that he talks the, the topic of the song is literally like someone who's captured and then has like stockholm syndrome Oh, damn. Yeah, yeah uh, Polly is like a pretty messed up song. And then like Lake of Fire. Lake of Fire just uh, literally, uh, it takes like a biblical sense where like people who are bad, um, they go to like a Lake of Fire. Um, but it's supposed to, it's like something that's like kind of hard to digest, but it it's supposed to bring out the beauty and like the worst things. I need to listen to Nirvana. I haven't. I, the, the only Nirvana song I don't even know if it is Nirvana it probably isn't I'm probably gonna get like bombed right now but <laughs> Team Spirit is yeah, that Nirvana? The, yeah. oh thank god <laughs> that's the only one I know oh that's one of the most famous yeah, ones yeah exactly <laughs> but I need to yeah I need to listen to uh, it but yeah like I feel like he himself embodied a generation because when he like sadly when he killed himself mm-hmm. that was like the decline of grunge and then you had other people who try to take uh, take the take the throne like mm-hmm. uh, like Bush and Cake and stuff, um, but it just didn't work out. I mean, like I still like grunge, but that goes back to like my rocker sense because yeah. freaking Guns N' Roses was considered like underground, like hardcore, but then now everyone's like it's cool, it's like it's normal. Considered underground? Yeah. Was it really? Guns N' Roses started as an underground band. Interesting. Uh, same thing with Scorpions, but now they're just mocked because Rocky like a Hurricane is played like everywhere, to any <laughs> sense. I love that song. <laughs> Most, my, my introduction to rock was was surprisingly through the video game Guitar Hero and that's, I mean there's nothing wrong yeah. with that that's like a lot of people's introduction that's so yeah. like, that, right it really is that's what I'm saying I, like I, I knew my friends especially like you guys like you guys like Jolin um, in middle school that's when you guys were already like knew the rock scene you know you guys already like were listening to like your bands you already got a selection of who you like what you want to listen to but during middle school yeah. I was like it was still listening to what my sister was listening you know like fucking usher neo uh you know r&b stuff you know baby i want to love you um so that's why when i got into guitar hero and i started hearing all these rock songs i was like hell yeah i, I love this genre this is amazing you know so I, I started researching it but you know i there were so many songs i didn't research enough and i didn't remember the art the artist's enough yeah. to like go deep into it and i'm just right here in like limbo <laughs> which is surprising because you're bad at memorizing the artist's names and songs yeah. that they sing but when it comes to the lyrics, lyrics. Mm-hmm. you 
like a human them. jukebox. Yeah. But yeah. You need to know both, bro. You yeah, can't exactly. just, you know. But All right, I got like, a question. Uh, it's a it's a small question. Just a little segue. Yeah. Small, small, small what are you <laughs> I don't know. Well, what were you pointing at, Dylan? <laughs> it was like I'm cutting, <laughs> cutting it into sections. <laughs> Getting in there. Anyways, you you heard um, you've heard Anxiety by Logic, right? On his new album, Everybody. Uh, how does it go, real quick? Um, it's uh, it starts out with this chick that's like, everything is fine, everything is so fine. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm gonna get up in your mind right now. Make it feel like that right now. Yeah. You heard that you heard it right, yes, both sir. of you? I have not actually. Alright, this is more for Edward. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Right. So uh, my sister recently got into Logic and then she told me like her favorite songs on that on on his newest album was Everybody and um one eight hundred. Uh, the suicide hotline number uh but i told her like i told her anxiety was one of my favorite songs and she was like why like it's it's a really weird song and i was like well someone who deals with like minor anxiety this how the song is like laid out in the beat to it it actually feels like you're going through an anxiety attack because the start the song starts starts off all like in a really soothing melody and like you're reassured that you're good and stuff and then as soon as logic comes in like yeah, the beat it, yeah. the beat like speeds up it's hectic he's ev- like it's just everywhere and then that's how you feel when you have an anxiety attack like you can't focus on one thing and you feel like everything is just going to come crashing down so you try to hold yourself and i mean like even though i have minor anxiety like i can just uh sympathize with someone who has like life crippling anxiety like that's how they must feel on the inside he even addresses it at the end of the song like i wrote this for someone with anxiety yeah yeah I just wanted to get your take on it. Like, did you, uh, did you catch that the first time that you saw it? Like, what did you think? I mean, I kind of did, but I kind of didn't, cause I, I, I don't think I have anxiety, so it's a, you know, it's a little hard to relate to that aspect. But now that you're saying it, it, like, it makes sense, cause you know he did, you know, all of a sudden just bombard you with like nothing. Well, I came from nothing, but um, I didn't get it just because he's done that before. Like uh, what? What uh, on his second album? Where he's uh, Is you know, the I'm incredible true story. Yeah, yeah, the incredible true story, where he's he's um, you know, I, I'll be like a a mailman sending letters to everybody. Oh, like whoa. Yeah, like whoa, where he's just like he's starting and then boom. So I I see what you mean, and I can see that now, like the the whole anxiety thing, especially in this album, because it's more like to help his listeners. He's doing this. Uh, that's yeah, it's more it's yeah. more geared towards everybody. Yeah, that's that's why he did that whole uh, one eight hundred. I don't know the full number, but you know it yeah, was for that. Yeah, the suicide hotline. Yeah, yeah, and I love yeah. that about Logic that he doesn't stick to like one thing, but I love the fact that he's going back to the roots of like storytelling. You know, having intermissions between songs, and it's it's dope that he's trying to unite. You know, everybody. Yeah, he's trying to unite everybody, uh, upbring people's spirits, but still, you know, get in your face and you know, yeah, that, that's tough, though, the Joe. I feel, I feel like, I feel like what he's trying to do is trying to like, you know, inform everybody that you know Thank the you. problems that everyone has is like. Even if you've it's never real. experienced like, yeah, it, yeah. yeah, it's you could have a little taste of it, or yeah. just you know know that it's not a small issue that you might, if you might want to blow it off, you know. Just, yeah, just a lot of people just for, yeah, a lot of people don't take into granted what other people are dealing with, yeah, or what they may have. They just assume things, and then that's bad. Yeah, that's or at least real, like man. if you yeah. haven't experienced it, to them it's something world changing. Yeah. Even though for you, you have no idea. Like you could just yeah, be so whatever. Just, uh, just sympathize with like, people, you know. No, don't be the asshole. I saw, there's too many on this world already yeah. exactly way too many so I listened to a little bit right now of the song while you guys were like describing it and uh, but I get what you mean Jovan I, I saw the, right? the intro the intro is really calming really relaxing and the girl the, even the girl's voice is just very soothing and uh, when Logic comes in the beat just changes it's exactly. just like he starts building up and then, more um, and more Something Pretty that cool. something that I found out um, not through not through rap or anything it was actually like a documentary that I was watching um, the reason why, like, K-pop songs are at such a high, uh, like, beat per minute, or they're so, like, um, like fast beated, is, is the fact that, like, literally someone can listen to K-pop, and within, with, like, before the song even ends, like, their mood is just 
better than when they started because the beat it does this uh, does this thing to your brain where it just like uh, it speeds up your heart without you mm-hmm. knowing it so then that increases your oxygen it increases oxytocin in your brain and you just overall feel better isn't that, isn't that what most well a lot of songs try to do exactly you know, that's why to, a lot of songs now mm-hmm. have really fast beats try to match but then like beat, you look at songs like in the 90s like Biggie and stuff his beats are pretty slow yeah um, and they were meant to just be like a chill like you just something that you vibe to yeah that's right yeah, um, but then the whole like fast beat everything's a science in this world yeah the whole like um, keeping a fast beat and stuff uh, that also uh, started with like feature and designer because they're like the pioneers of today's uh, music for sure for sure yeah. Um, but yeah and I feel like that's a pretty good segue to my next question like what do you think about the music scene today uh, it doesn't have to be just hip hop and rap it could be anything else yeah like how do you think how do you like in your eyes how do you see uh, music evolving right now. Do you think mariachi is gonna take off as soon as, it, <laughs> <laughs> as big as it did? Nah, not maybe not in the U.S. Back. Make a comeback. Well, yeah, because you know our parents, a lot of them immigrated to the U.S., so they brought their culture. But when it comes down to bringing it down to their children, they don't want them to be that Mexican because they're not gonna have the same opportunities. They want them to be better in this country. And that's where mariachi gets watered down, you know, like, parents used to, you know, have, uh, what is it, the serenatas to their girlfriends. Yeah. We don't do that. That's true. We know what it is. We know where we can get mariachis, but yeah. nobody does that because it's, it's a, weird. It's a good idea. It's like, kind it's, of weird. Yeah, it's like, it's like, quote unquote weird. It's very romantic, but nobody Extreme. here would, would do it, you Extreme. know, it's just, because yeah, yeah. you got people that, like, your neighbors, they would hate that, or just, like, in general, it's like, what the hell is that guy doing, yeah, you know? I feel, um, and then I feel like it's also hard, too, because just, like, the the difference in, in the layout of, like, a city, like, compared to, like, a, like, you look at the cities here, everything is, like, a grid, and then in Mexico, like, you have, it, it, it's, like, a random order, but it works to the sense where, like, you, know you can actually, is. like, post up a mariachi in, like, your girlfriend's back window, yeah. because there's no, like, fence or neighbor to deal with, whereas here in the United States, like, what are you, you going to do, throw rocks at their front, at the front door? Yeah, yeah, but, um, and aside from that, Country, or, country yeah. wise, I, I don't listen to that, so I don't know what's going on. I know Miley Cyrus, you know, changed her whole facet. Went from country to like. Oh, she went from rap? whatever she was doing to going back to country. Yeah, that's what I meant. Oh, she was like, yeah. She, yeah, she said like, I'm yeah. done with. Um, She's like, I'm done with this phase. I'm gonna go back to. Oh, yeah. I thought I thought you were talking about the whole transition from good girl country nah, bro, to like I'm that whole sh- cutting your no, hair right like now. Twenty seventeen. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah she oh, I heard about back. that too. Country music is actually like evolving. I don't know much about country. I actually have it's heard uh, new new country songs. Yeah, it's yeah. not all about like my pickup truck and yeah. stuff. Like what people think. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, it's, but, stereotypical uh, country song is, is dead is dying at least, but yeah, at least country's it's just starting into to something else. It's starting to move into like I mean I feel like country's always been like this uh it's always been about like being a free spirit and just like trying to be yourself in a yeah. world that like people are trying to tell you what to do. Um, yeah, I feel right. like it's always been like that, but there was a deviation, and now it's like starting to go back to that. The, don't don't quote me on any of this. Like I don't really listen to country. It's just like the little that I know of. Mm-hmm. I think R and B is up in the rise right now, though. Like, uh, oh, definitely, yeah, I agree. Like, uh, there's there's my boy Daniel Caesar. I don't know if you guys have mm-hmm. heard of him, but he's yeah. he's real good. Like he's it's he's really like uh, what is it? He's really good with his vocals. There's this, is he like uh, very soulful, like Sam Smith? Mm, yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah, you could say that. Uh, Sam Smith definitely put the the spotlight on that mm-hmm. genre, you know, telling yep. him. Especially because you know he's gay. He's uh, talking about another aspect of it. Then there's this. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Jason Park recently got signed into uh, what was it? Uh, Jay Z's label, uh, Rockefeller. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, when did I say his name? Jason Park. Yeah. Is it Jason Park? Uh, that's what you said right now. Maybe. No, I think that's a skater. My bad. <laughs> he got signed up. <laughs> um, Jay Z. I'll talk to my little. But yeah, definitely R and B is up in the smokes right now. Like it's going up. It's it's funny. Like now that you brought up R and B and and you thought about uh brought up about Sam Smith is gay. You think about um back in the time like when I would listen to my sister's music R and B like that. 
all those love songs were about a guy and girl relationship and you think you realize that back then the hate homophobia was actually pretty like high up there you know at least like yeah I, and, it, and it wasn't that long ago yeah exactly that's that's what's surprising me right now what I, what's catching me off guard because it's like uh, you listen to all those you know i love you baby the songs but it's like it's it's be behind a, a veil of like homophobia because it's like you don't accept gay people and even if you are writing it about a guy you don't find out until after your career is done they're like oh my god he was gay the whole time whoa like so all those songs that you thought was about a girl is actually about a guy and then people start seeing him differently because of it but now you're actually like in this era you're actually more accepting of like gays and you know just that type of community and just some people in general exactly. not even like of his sexual preference but just their backgrounds yeah and it's just it's it's awesome like how it's yeah, evolving like that um, I agree with you but yeah uh, you were saying it for drugs yeah that's about it I mean I don't really listen to anything else uh, I was gonna say that like I've been out of the out of like the rock scene like rock alternative punk anything else I've been out of it for so long like I don't even know who who's big anymore mm-hmm. like I know there are a lot of a lot of artists that I used to listen to, all of them are coming out with like new tapes. Like I think, like Linkin Park has one, but I think it's like an homage to their to the singer that just passed away. Mm, okay. Um, that was a that was another band recently that I forgot. They they came out with a new album, and Green I was Day. I was surprised. <laughs> Green Day actually has a couple new yeah, albums, and they're pretty good. They have, are they? I, I haven't like I've ones. read reviews of them, mm-hmm. and I've heard people say like, yeah, you know what, Green Day like come out comes out with good stuff. But mm-hmm. I wasn't into Green Day back in the day, and I don't feel like I'd get into get into them now. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, like good for them, like they're still trying to stay relevant. Yeah, true. Um, but yeah, it, it's funny because I took a I took an African American studies class at my university. And the professor that I had, she, like, strongly believes and has, like, the evidence to back it up that, like, rap and hip-hop is, like, the only musical movement that has never gone away. Like, it's been present since the 60s, and it'll, like, continue to stay present. It's, the thing is that they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and people are slowly, like, not listening to anything else. Like, the, it's kind of killing all the other genres, which yeah, kind of exactly. sad. But it's surprising because it used to be underground. It used to mm-hmm. be only like, you like, know, African Americans that used yeah. to listen to it. You know, because hip hop well, started in New York. Nobody knew what it was. No, you know, everybody was like, "Oh, what, what is this garbage?" Like, you're gonna re- you're gonna take my jazz record and flip it where there's like, I mean, there was already almost oh, no lyrics, but you're just gonna do that to it? Like, what? And all of a sudden, everybody's listening to hip hop. Everybody. Yeah. You know, yeah, and they bring light in like um, the Netflix series. They get down. They bring light of that issue too. Um, that's that's basically what it deals with. It deals with like the clash of uh, three different musical genres. It's like the the one that's persisting disco, then the up and coming rap, and then overseas rock because they they yeah. pay homage to uh, what was that band? What band? I think it's like the the, the Strokes that they talk that they remember in like the second season. There's like that. That girl that he gets a, the daughter of the guy that he gets to interview with. That oh she's listening yeah, yeah, that's to, right, that's right. She's into some like European yeah. band yeah. and like they're super big, but I forget their name. Uh, I I'm pretty sure it's the Stokes, but the Strokes, but I don't know. Yeah, but uh, I feel you. Well, yeah, it's it's pretty nice how like they depict that the clash of three different musics. Yep. Yeah, no doubt it was the clash of titans, but now I guess only one titan left survived <laughs> yeah uh, i know techno is pretty big right now with like you know edc raise uh, and stuff definitely, all yeah. those so that's still keeping it alive but uh, i'm not into that whole scene so yeah. I, I i've actually listened to quite a few like techno songs and uh is skrillex defined as techno yeah i, I define him as techno i feel like he has his own genre but just like it's like a sub genre of techno uh um, like Dubstep, there you go. That's what I was thinking. Oh, okay. Because I was going to... I always group, like, Skrillex and, like, Steve Aoki together. Wait, who's Steve Aoki? He's, like, another DJ. Yeah, he's he's like DJ. Oh, Aoki. Yeah, there okay. Okay, yeah. I know him. Uh, but no, I, I've just listened to a little bit, and all I could say from that is just... Uh, techno is one of those songs that 
you could it, it hypes you up because again with the whole heartbeat and uh, beats per minute type of stuff yeah. science behind it uh, but also because it has m- most of them don't really have lyrics and the few lyrics that they do have are just like nonsense that doesn't really make sense so you could either interpret it the way you want or just you know ignore it and just keep listening to the music or to the beats so it's it's music that's used for parties and for raves because of that reason that you could just dance to it that you don't have to give a care you don't have to listen to like the lyrics or the message behind the lyrics you can just listen to the beats and enjoy them and i feel like that's why techno uh just it's growing because people are just looking for those songs that you know you don't really have to find a mood for you can just listen to it at any time and then it'll it'll make a mood for you and then from then on you can just go to the next genre that you want to listen to uh but you know yeah that's, that's pretty much what I've learned yeah. from techno. I don't know if anything jazz is growing. Do you like jazz? <laughs> I love jazz. <laughs> all right, I got a, I got a, a question for both for all three of us actually. For sure. Um, if there was a, if there was an artist, rapper, composer, dead or alive that you can meet and hang out with for the day, who would it be, and what would you do? Up, uh, was it rapper, composer, or what was it? Or artist? Or artist? Anybody? Okay. Um. Oh, that's tough. Dead or alive? Edward, go go ahead. I feel like you're. I feel. I feel like I already know your answer. I'm gonna go with my favorite of all time. I'm gonna go with Tupac. Yeah. Just cause when I see movies or documentaries, either like about him, I've read his book too. He sounds like such a down to earth guy that you know he could go from being a thug to just revolutionizing your mind, and that that's what I like. I like people that don't just stick to one thing. Um, so that's why I, I would want to talk to him. Not because he's super popular or none of that. Like, I want to see what the son of a Black Panther has in his mind, you know? Like, I want to I wanna take what his knowledge he has and, you know, just take soak it in. Yeah, uh, just see what you can learn yeah. for yourself. As in what to do, I don't know. That's interesting. I mean, you guys could just, it could be as simple as just, like, go and get food. Down. Yeah. But it has to be special food. You can't just sit down and eat a sandwich with Tupac. Come on, bro. Well, what if you like sandwiches? Yeah. That's what why find, I need to know first. What if you find that one sandwich, like, he really loves the tuna melt, and you're like, bro, I know where to get the best tuna melt in L.A. And then you go take him there, and he's like, yo, for real, let's talk. But, yeah, yeah. I mean, that that's who I would want to talk to. Just yeah, knowledge. Yeah. I, want, I like knowledge. Yeah. I, I, I mean, staying, staying on that topic, actually, I agree. Like... Uh, I was thinking about that, and I I would definitely want to talk to Immortal Technique. Like he's he's the rapper that I would definitely want to like hang out with and and get to know. But I, I guess what stops me from fully diving into that, even if I would get the chance to, would be that I would feel very inferior i would make myself like feel inferior yeah. yeah i would get intimidated by how much he actually knows and how much how strongly he's fighting for that um i would love to get to hang out with him because i want to know all that stuff i want to know how messed up this country is i want to know what's going on behind our backs i want to know what he knows i want to know what he's fighting for what his cause is for you know i want to know everything he knows but at the same time i don't want to sound like an idiot right in front of him because like I have respect for him. Yeah, you know, sure. and and I, at the same time, I would feel because of that, I would feel like I would be wasting his time. Uh, but yeah, if 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 it was no issue like that, if I if I would jump for it, if I would actually get the courage to do it, I would choose a moral technique. Probably go sure. out, go out to like, I don't know, maybe one of his 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 parties or something like uh, whatever he's doing. You know, gonna, gonna go fight for like a cause, go after it with him and do that shit. What about you, Jordan? See, compared to you guys, mine's stupid. <laughs> hey, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. No, no, like, the, the We're going to quote you on this, Joel. I know. You guys can't <laughs> quote me. Um, the person that I would choose to hang out with is probably just Logic. Right. Just because... You um, know, he lives in the hills, right? Beverly Hills? Chino Hills. Oh, okay. Think so, or, I don't know. I yeah, can just roll up to his house and be like, yo, what up? <laughs> you could you yeah. know him. I, I don't know. I could. Him, or if know, he, he loves all yo, the, a lot of things we like. You know, know, if somebody, if, yeah, if somebody <laughs> listens to this podcast knows Logic and wants to hook us up, yo, uh, it's I'm just saying. Free. I'm here in LA. Definitely. Jumbohaj at gmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I choose Logic because, um, like, not only do I admire him as a musician and a composer, um, there's very few people that I feel like I can vibe with because um, we're both like multicultural. 
like he grew up um, through like struggling uh, being black like being half black half white I mean I didn't struggle that much being half Mexican half Filipino but it's like always weird because uh, there's all these like weird questions that people come up with that it's just like it's common sense Mm -hmm. to other people it's like which one do you like oh do you feel like you're more Mexican or more Filipino like do you feel like you're more black or more white it's like I feel like I'm both yeah. Because obviously, like, both my parents, uh, like, my parents celebrate them equally. Or even then, it's just, like, I don't feel like any of them. I feel like I'm an American. Let it all out, Joe. Let it all out. This is my, this is my home little rant. Go for it. No, um, so, yeah, I would choose him because I feel like on that, like, not only on that aspect, but just, like, multiple aspects, I feel like we can vibe. Because he's also a huge nerd. He loves science. He loves technology. We can vibe about that. He did get Neil deGrasse Jr. He did. He got that Neil deGrasse dope. Tyson on his that album. I probably asked him about wait, that, wait, too. Like, how is... Yeah. Yeah, 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 Neil, Neil, Neil deGrasse, he, he plays, he plays well, the role he's of God. God. Yeah, in everybody, in all the, yeah. Yo, I gotta listen to that. But yeah, That's like crazy. I feel like That's we awesome. can we can probably I, I like vibe that. on a bunch of things. What we would do is I probably play like Mario Kart with him because he's hey, known. Are you going to that? He's Yo. known to be like an amazing Mario Kart player. Like he's beat all the rappers. Am I gonna challenge him to a Rubik's cube? Yo, I don't know. If we could get I'm Logic to, to do a let's play with us. Uh, right? Mario he has Kart? a YouTube channel. Yo, yeah, he, has he does. Yeah, let's. Oh, nah, let's that's, that's gonna be yeah, hard. Yeah, but no, hey, exactly. that'd be awesome. But yeah, that'd I would do that. We'd probably just like sit and play video games. I'll probably we really, like cook something for him and we'll just have a Definitely. good time. Nice. So, so, so sticking to this topic, I got a question for you guys or for us. Um, do you think what they say, you know, the, the saying goes of never meet your idols because... Because you'll, you'll be disappointed? Yeah, exactly. Would, now, the people that you chose, do you think you'll be disappointed in meeting them? No. Nah. Or do you think, like, they'll treat you some, in one way that you don't expect they would treat you? Probably not. Just because I don't hold my idols on such a high pedestal. I see them as someone that I can, like get get inspired by mm-hmm. or um just just to help me out in a tough time but mm-hmm. it's not like like i don't see logic as a god yeah i don't okay. see uh freaking i don't see the bgs as a god i don't see uh rage against the machines as like the only good the pantheon yeah. or like the gods of olympus or like the staple of the genre or anything exactly. like that exactly yeah, what about you, Edward? Do you think Tupac would, would be different than what you expect, but, like, not in a good way, like, in a bad way that it would disappoint you? Mm, I don't think he would, just because he's more, like, I feel he's more accepting. Maybe in the beginning he'll be like, who's this nigga? Uh-huh. And then I'll be like, oh, uh, you know, I'll introduce myself, and hopefully we vibe. And even then I'll just be like, yo, I'm just, try- I'm just trying to talk about politics. I'm just trying to talk about, you know, real life situations, the streets. Yeah. And if like, he doesn't, yeah. then, you know, he's still going to be one of my idols. Maybe not my favorite, but he's still going to be. I favorite. feel like, like, Tupac, like, the little that I know about Tupac, I feel like he's one of those people, or, he, yeah, he was one of those people that if he saw, like, genuine compassion in you or he knew that, like, like you, you're, you like, a real homie or, like, you're down for what you say, then he'll he's, like, you know, I yeah, give yeah. you respect. Yeah, I feel like even if you, even if he knew you, like, you know, dealt some crack on the side or anything like that. If he knew that all that money was going for your family and not for like you yourself, like to go yeah. abuse that shit, you know, uh, I feel like even though it's something bad and he would look down upon you for it, yeah. the fact that you're doing it for your family or for your friends, it, he would have at least some respect for you, you know, like he wouldn't just dismiss you right away and be like, you could do better in your life. What you know, about you, Victor? Uh, well, I mean, I already, I already said like I would feel. Uh, stupid talking oh, to right, right. immoral yeah, technique yeah, yeah. Um, but at the same time I, I don't feel like I would be disappointed in meeting him in that aspect like I wouldn't I wouldn't be let down in meeting my idol the quote unquote idol uh, but I would I would be disappointed in myself for not being able to match or at least contribute to the conversation we would be having I, I would be there more just to like learn yeah. from him you know like see what he's been through see the experience and just uh, see what the world has to offer yeah. All right, uh, All right, we're gonna take another break. Uh, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. Good, cool. All right, so uh, we're back. I'm sorry, I'm taking your spotlight. That's but, cool. Uh, <laughs> You're a guest. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm gonna ask a question, the first question, and also the last question. All right, go ahead. All right, so my question to you guys is: If you could go into one music genre, even if it's just a one hit, uh, one, one hit wonder. Hit wonder yeah. What genre would you go into? Anyway. Wait, like like by ourselves or we're joining a group? 
Yeah, yeah. Well, it depends. How do you want it? You uh, could okay. go solo okay. or you could go right. group. All right, for sure. Yeah. So, hmm. which one? Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. I guess I'll go first. Go. Um, I, I'd probably go back to alternative. I'll try, or, yeah, just alternative. Try to start up a band. If not, uh, if, if a band doesn't work, then I'll try to... I probably go into like solar, solar R and B. Like try to, try to do similar things that like Ed Sheeran's doing. I, I really like Ed Sheeran. Um, his newest album, Divide. What, well, his most recent album, I think, Divide. It's pretty good. Um, there's a lot of songs there that you can feel like he, he incorporated a lot of his like heart and soul into them. Um, he even made like a song for his mom. And it's beautiful. <laughs> Whatever, Edward. <laughs> go, Dylan, go, Edward. Um, so yeah, I choose like R and B. If I if I went solo, uh, R and B and soul. If I was able to pull up a band, alternative. Not bad. Yeah, I I can see you going into that. Definitely. Thank you. Um, well, I mean, I've always liked singing, but my voice is never the best. Um, so I've always just I've I thought about this question and uh, I would I personally I would love to go into like. R&B, uh, you know, the, my romantic style type of songs, uh, just just make, like, music that, you know, really gets to you when you're down, you know, you, even even if, like, you're having a great day, you know, something bad happens, it's a type of song where, like, if you listen to it, it could help make your day better because you realize, hey, that small thing, it was just, I'll get over it, you know. Yeah, you, it was it, just it's, that, it's a that, small thing. Yeah, it's just a small inconvenience, like, it doesn't ruin my day. Um... But because I myself don't find my like my skills worthy enough, I would probably would love to go into techno pop, or, or like Ooh. what what you know Daft Punk is. Have you guys heard of yeah. Daft Punk? Like, have you heard their music? Yeah. Um, their genre. I would love to go into their genre because if I do have to sing, I could just use auto tune and it sounds great. If hey, if I did it in rap, right? I'm saying. Uh, if I don't have to sing, I could just make the beats, and I love making beats. Like I'm always good with like keeping rhythm in my head. Like I'm always been good at doing that too. So, you know, it's, it seems like a good genre I would be into. Got it. Um. Uh, yeah. What, what would you go into? I mean, I guess I'd say rap, just because that's what I'm more knowledgeable on. That's what you know. Yeah, but. I remember my rock face, you know, listening to ACDC and all that. And yeah. I, I, I guess the fact of just learning how to shred on the guitar would also pull me into that. But oh, that's true, because you, lear- you learned how to play guitar. Yeah. I but, forgot about that. You know, doing all that, but definitely, definitely rap. Just because it's poetic, and I like that. You can express yourself freely as much as you can there. Yeah? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah, but I'm going I'm to keep it OG. I'm not gonna be just beats. You know? <laughs> you gotta have a message behind every song. Yeah, behind every song, even like the stupidest song. Well, I mean, like, that, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. Like, if I could get somebody to be my DJ, I'd want them to be close, as close as possible to uh, DJ Quick. Oh, nice. Just because yes. that guy's beats were all amazing, especially the little cowbell thing. Ooh, yeah. I love that. <laughs> That's my. I could I could see you making like for some reason, I could see you making a song that sounds really dumb, but in the end it's like a message that you can have fun with your friends doing stupid stuff. You know, like even even the dumbest things could be fun if you're with the right people. That's how it is. I I feel like that. That's good. Yeah, I can see that. For sure. That's about it. Yeah. Not bad. All right. Um, All right. Well, thank you, Edward, for joining us. You're welcome. Uh, yeah. It's been a pleasure. Hopefully. Thanks a lot, Edward. Hey, can I make a quick shout out? Yeah, for yeah, sure. All right. Because yeah. uh, well, I'm about to start a YouTube channel with my uh, other two friends, Lewis and uh, Bruce. Well, what's, what's, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. What's your, what's your uh, channel name? It's gonna be Couch Potatoes. I'm still not sure if it's like one word or two words. Uh, we're, <laughs> we haven't talked about this. Where I'm literally gonna go to his house to do another podcast yeah. right after this. But yeah, I just mean, keep I mean, out. hopefully, um, more collaboration. If, if you guys everything. are done with the YouTube channel by then. By the time this uh, video comes out, maybe we could like put a link down into our description yeah, definitely. just that, to your that'd channel. That'd be appreciated immensely. Yeah. Go go check them out, guys. You know, see see how they're doing. Yeah, uh, but uh, have a wonderful day, you guys. Uh, definitely expand your uh, music choices because don't limit yourself. Yeah. There's a lot out there. Yeah. Very I mean, good selections. Music does have a big 
you know, influence on you. If you're sad and all you're listening to is sad songs, Don't you're gonna stay in a sad loop. Like, yeah. nah, bro, like, get out of there. But yeah. yeah, or even if you're like in a good way, you know, or if you feel like you you could change for the better, you know, try try looking at different uh, perspectives. You know, music could open your mind to that. Yeah, it's, it's, music's a beautiful thing. So Thanks, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode, and hopefully we could like open your eyes to a new genre that you probably never tried before. And you know, thanks, thanks for joining us, Edward. And you're welcome. You know, you're welcome. hopefully you'll join us in other podcasts yeah, and yeah, things that we definitely. do all the time. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Definitely, yeah, for sure, man. Uh, uh, so. Comment down below who's your favorite artist. Uh, any questions that we talked about, we'd love to hear your answers as well. Yeah, let us know, everybody. Um, get, don't forget to leave a like and a subscribe. Hit us up on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, we're always happy to communicate with fans. Hell yeah! Don't and be afraid. Don't be afraid. It's all good. Yeah, we Just love you. Buy it unless we you want to. Be <laughs> <laughs> Just won't buy hard. Okay. All right, all right. See, see you next time, everybody. Stay beautiful.